Hello, I'm Marianne Davies, and along with my co-author, Emily Duffield, we will be providing an overview of our article entitled, Safety of Checkpoint Inhibitors for Cancer Treatment, Strategies for Patient Monitoring and Management of Immune-Mediated Adverse Events, also referred to as IMAEs. Hello, I'm Emily Duffield. In this review, we will present the IMAE profile of checkpoint inhibitors and provide recommendations for best practices for monitoring patients and managing adverse events. First, let's review what checkpoint inhibitors are and why they lead to IMAEs. Malignant cells present different antigens from healthy cells that identify them as targets for the immune system. However, malignant tumors have evolved a number of mechanisms that allow them to evade recognition by the immune system. They can downregulate expression of tumor antigens on the cell surface so they're no longer detected as foreign entities. They can upregulate expression of other proteins on the cell surface that induce immune cell deactivation. And they can induce cells in the tumor microenvironment to release cytokines that suppress immune responses while promoting tumor cell proliferation and survival. Checkpoint inhibitors are monoclonal antibodies that block the negative co-signaling molecules that prevent an effective immune response, with the result being restoration of T-cell mediated anti-tumor activity. The approved checkpoint inhibitors can be divided into three categories based on the different co-signaling molecules that they target, namely the cytotoxic T-lymphocyte associated antigen 4 or CTLA-4 inhibitors programmed cell death 1, or PD-1, inhibitors, and programmed cell death ligand 1, or PDL one inhibitors. The adverse events seen with checkpoint inhibitors differ from those seen with typical chemotherapeutic agents. The unique mechanism of action of these immunotherapy agents involves deregulation of the immune system, which results in immune-mediated toxicities that can mimic a broad range of autoimmune conditions and can be serious. IMAEs can impact any part of the body, but most commonly involve the gut, skin, endocrine glands, liver, and lungs. IMAEs have been observed in up to 90% of patients treated with checkpoint inhibitors in clinical trials. Most immune-mediated toxicities can be managed effectively if detected and treated early, so oncology nurses and physicians should familiarize themselves with the signs and symptoms of serious immune-mediated toxicities. It is also important to educate patients and caregivers on how to recognize the symptoms of IMAEs and encourage them to immediately report any suspected IMAEs to their healthcare provider. Creating telephone triage algorithms can assist clinic staff with assessing the need for immediate evaluation when patients call to report symptoms of an IMAE. In addition, other healthcare providers, such as the patient's primary care physician, should be alerted that the patient is receiving immune therapy so that they can assist in monitoring the patient. Because the onset of IMAEs can occur at any time during and after treatment, routine monitoring with each point of contact is critically important. Monitoring should include an evaluation, including the review of vital signs with a walking oxygen saturation, labs to evaluate organ function, and a complete history and physical to identify any new or worsening side effects. Clinicians should follow published guidelines for the management of IMAEs. Depending on the organ system involved and the specific agent, some mild to moderate events can be managed symptomatically with the patient remaining on treatment, while others require the dose to be held. For patients with more severe events, such as grade three, four, or prolonged grade two, Treatment is typically held while the event is managed with corticosteroids or, if needed, additional immune suppressant agents such as infliximab or mycophenolate. Once the IMAE resolves to grade 1 or baseline, the decision to resume therapy should be made after weighing the risks and benefits and taking into account the type of toxicity, severity, and potential for long-term complications. It should be noted that the presence or absence of an IMAE does not affect the efficacy of a checkpoint inhibitor. Because of the potential for significant clinical benefit with checkpoint inhibitors, efforts should be made to identify and manage adverse events in order to keep the patients on therapy when possible. This article highlights the critical role that all healthcare providers play in identifying IMAEs 
educating patients about the importance of timely reporting of symptoms and assisting in the management and follow-up of patients who develop immune-mediated events while taking checkpoint inhibitors. Checkpoint inhibitors are a new and growing therapeutic class with additional indications, combination regimens, and novel regimens in late-stage clinical development. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.